Hi, Mark Washburn here from Pond Algae Solutions. And in this week's Pond Tip, I want to talk a little bit about how to test your water uh, parameters in your pond. Now, one of the things that we provide on the website, and also we include some sample test strips with every order of our Biosphere Pro product, as well as our 2500 small pond system, and that is uh, these five in one test strips. Uh, you'll see on the back of the bottle their uh, color chart uh, and color coded. Uh, you basically dip these into the pond water for a second or two, uh, get some of the excess water off, and then watch the, the color pads on there change to a particular tinting and compare that to the color chart to get readings on five different parameters. Now these would include uh, pH, uh, alkalinity, water hardness, nitrites and nitrates and all of these things are useful to know particularly if you're uh, treating your pond biologically. pH as we know is pretty important to the overall vitality and, uh, and livelihood of beneficial bacteria. Uh, most bacteria won't work very well outside of uh, a parameter of 6.0 to 9.0 and ideally uh, we'd like to see pH somewhere in the neutral position of 7.0 to 7.5 or so, maybe 7 to, to 8.0 is, is workable. Um, and so that is a good, good thing to check if you're going to treat with any type of beneficial bacteria product or any natural product at all. Uh, the other things that are important, alkalinity is useful because uh, it's important to limit or minimize pH swings in your pond. pH will fluctuate throughout the day on a, on a daily basis in every single pond, but minimizing this fluctuation is very useful. And so by adding something as simple as uh, baking soda, uh, if the alkalinity readings are low, you can uh, improve the buffering capacity of the pond. Basically, buffering means that any excess acids or bases, alkaline substances that come into the water can be absorbed by this buffering material and it will limit the fluctuations of pH. We'll talk more about that in another video down the road, but it's a good thing to know. The other thing that's really useful is checking water hardness. Bacteria can make very good use of minerals in your water in your pond water. If the water is mineral deficient, bacteria may be diminished or its effects and capabilities may be diminished a little bit. One example, when you're dealing with phosphates and phosphate loads in a pond, bacteria uses calcium to help uh, control these phosphates. It will take and bind or it's an activator to bind calcium and phosphates together which neutralizes the phosphates and without adequate calcium you may not get as, uh, as effective of a response with bacteria so it's useful to have adequate minerals in the water. Uh, nitrites and nitrates are both part of the nitrogen cycle and checking these things will allow you to see if you have adequate uh, nitrifying bacteria working within your pond that the cycle is is going through the process of breaking down these various nutrients into harmless substances that your plants can can utilize for food and that bacteria can break down and keep uh, the pond balanced. So these things are very useful to know. Now uh, other test strips that you might find in the market would include ammonia testing strips which are very useful to make sure that you're not getting any toxic ammonia levels in your pond which could be harmful to your fish. And then uh, certain uh, oxygen testing uh, strips are available. Uh, there's also digital pH meters, digital oxygen testers, all kinds of different things on the market. One of the best places to look for those is on eBay. You'll find some of the best prices on the market there. And the key with all of these things is just making sure that the parameters that you're testing are adequately measured by the tools you're using. One quick example before I close here. Pool uh, maintenance people use pH test strips for their uh, management of pools. However, most of these test strips that you'll find at places like Walmart and some of the discount stores, they don't have a broad enough range for our purposes in ponds. In other words, they may go up to about 8.0, 8.5 on the test readings, but if they top out there and your pH is actually higher than that, it's good to know. Most bacteria will work up to about 9.0. Uh, fish will tolerate readings up to about 9.0, but as you get beyond that, uh, you can run into some problems. So it's good to use uh, testing tools that are designed specifically for the pond environment. You'll get your best results and best readings that way. And look for other videos coming along where we talk about some of these parameters in more detail. Uh, but 
if you're not testing your pool, or, or I'm sorry, your pond water, it's a good idea to do that and keep an eye on it just to make sure everything is looking good. Hope that helps, and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Visit us at pondalgesolutions.com if you have any questions. Take care.